okay, second half? Let us proceed. But I say it's a scary future. Uh, a Minecraft future, because I don't like Minecraft. If I did, I'd probably be perfectly fine with it, because at least it's a video game, and it's not, you know, some other form of media that is getting messages into children's heads without them really knowing it. Not that I care too much about children, because I have this theory that children, you know, if, if a child wants to read, he's going to learn to read. If a child wants to beat up his, beat up people smaller than him, he's going to beat up people smaller than him until somebody bigger comes along and beats him up. And that's either going to reform him or teach him to, to get bigger himself, and then the cycle of misery continues. It's one of those things where we, we'd love to blame the parents, but at some point we have to take some kind of check that kids know when they're being bad. You know, they're instilled with some sense of morals when they're younger, be it bad morals or good ones. It doesn't have to be, you know, one or the other. It can just be any kind of moral code. Because every time I was bad at school, I knew I was being bad. There was never a moment when I was like, why am I in trouble? I knew why I was in trouble, because I got caught doing something I shouldn't be doing. It doesn't matter what it is. It could have been fighting, it could have been swearing, it could have been drawing something that's inappropriate, it could have been with somebody who threw a, an iron bar over a fence that chipped the windscreen on a BMW. Could have been a whole bunch of different things, but at the end of the day, I always knew. And so do these people who were murdering folks and doing evil things and despicable things. There's a part of them that knows. There is also a part of them. There's a percentage of people who don't know, which they're the ones who are the real victims because they they don't have that, that distinction in their head. They just, you know, they look at hurting somebody or doing something bad or damaging something or just being an asshole in general is, is that's just all they know and that's where it's really sad but when it's somebody who does know better and they're doing it because they choose to and then I say fuck them I hope they choke because then we'll get rid of them and hopefully we'll just get all the nicer ones look at Wedgie so fast but I am rather Darwinian when it comes to surviving like, I don't think silica packets should have warnings on them. That way we get a few, get rid of a few dumb bastards that way. Maybe bring the entire planet's IQ up a little bit and progress forward into intellectual thinking rather than eating packets that come in microwaves. But it's a lot of things, isn't it? It's bringing it back to a world of what, Minecraft. Like, why Minecraft? Like, what is the lowest common denominator with Minecraft? And I suppose it would be that anybody can play it. There is literally no skill intensive part of Minecraft other than learning the where things are and what items do and the components and the lists and all that kind of stuff and because we're in a generation where everybody has a phone in their pocket and every phone has Google on it, regardless of how small you are, you can just get the answers immediately. So you don't even have to remember them anymore, you just Google it and there it is on your phone that you shouldn't have because you're nine years old and you shouldn't have a phone when you're nine. So who'd you have to call when you're nine? How important is your life at nine? You should be playing in the dirt, man, and jumping in rivers and shit. But who am I to tell children what they should be doing? It just comes off as weird. But I know what I was doing when I was nine and it wasn't fucking texting, I'll tell you that. And I was, you know, rather lucrative when it came to the ladies. But it was always in appropriate times, which was when I wasn't climbing trees and when I wasn't playing football. Come on, folks. Priorities here. Those were the days when you thought having sex meant laying on top of each other and rubbing around a bit. You didn't realise there was interconnecting parts or you'd never even envisioned the concept of holes. Like, come on. We were innocent. And it makes me wonder if this generation growing up will ever have innocence again, because you see way too much on the internet and it is far too easy to access. Like... I saw way too much because I had an older sister, and our school had a tendency- Why- Why do I keep passing with people who can't pass? I'm not even looking at my pass stats here, guys. I'm just- I'm talking, and my brain's just doing autopilot, and autopilot is bad. <laughs> but Wedge is really good at tackling, and these Ronsos are slow as piss, so I'll not pass with him anymore because he's rubbish. <clears throat> but the woods in my primary school had a propensity to having porn mags in them for some reason. Like, I would love to meet the guy who lost his porn mag in the woods because we were always the guys finding them. And you ask anybody of my age, they found a porn mag in a wood. They, they did. 
And you'll also remember that for some reason these pawn mags always had more dicks in them than anything else. Like, where was all this pawn with dicks in them? Why? I don't. I just don't understand it. Like, beautiful woman, massive dong. Or well, not necessarily a massive dong, because they were white. But still, you learnt a lot. I had. I had an upbringing of being able to watch 18 plus movies from a young age, so I learnt a lot from that out of context, and I kind of made my own context from it, but it's a lot different being brought up on Arnold Schwarzenegger films and, and action movies and stuff like that than getting brought up on the internet where what you get is what you choose to put in. Like, if you want to better yourself and become a more cultured individual, you can research all kinds of awesome things. You can get classic literature. You can learn all about, you know, the origins of things. You can read off famous people who discovered amazing things and then parrot it to your, parrot it to your friends as if you came up with it. You know, you can be Descartes for a day or Einstein, or Darwin, or anybody you want to use. You can be Carl Sagan, you can, you can do a lot of things. And you can sell it, because it's there to click of a button. Or, you can look for the most obscenely disgusting, just completely abject pornography that exists, and show all your friends and giggle at it. Additionally to this, you can also look for videos of people having accidents. Like break.com, where people fall over and you laugh at them. Or you can take it to an extreme where there's pictures of people dying, which you want to watch because you kind of have to and you can't look away. And there's other nasty videos. So it's literally it's what you put in. It's literally what you put in. Or it's an unlucky Google search. That's the distinction. Because oh wow, this is Albert Sykes. What am I doing? We need to we need to pay attention here. As much as the discussion was kind of flowing. So let's give it to. To brother. We'll have brother run up the, the left flank and we'll see if we can get some people to push forward. That pulls the, the mark off of Titus. Titus is not moving though. Titus is swimming in circles. Titus has just got past his mark so now we can try and jack shot him right in his balls. Come on Titus. You can't do it. Only two, only two, only two. Yes. No break. Jack shot. He's got 19 catch now, so we're barely higher, but we are higher, which gives us something. But I always wonder, aside from you know the, the obvious thing of, it's very easy to play, it's completely open, so it's like, fuck you, dude. It's like digital Lego, effectively. It's as interesting as you make it, but why Minecraft? Why not, you know, why not Blood Rain? <laughs> why not Destiny? Or why not Haze for the PS3? <laughs> a terrible game. Why not Insert? It doesn't make sense to me. Because to me there are much better games than Minecraft. Can you imagine if the Minecraft community was the Dark Souls community? I mean, had that kind of traffic, how cool that would be? That'd be insane. It'd be amazing, but that's just not the way it works. And there are other games that are similar to this, like League of Legends is incredibly popular, Dota 2 is incredibly popular, and those games are a hell of a lot more skill intensive. It's still kind of bashing one mouse button and watching, but they're still the doing stuff, even if it isn't the most interesting thing to watch them do, unless you're deep and then you love that shit. But it's always why this and why not that. I find it fascinating what takes off and what doesn't, which one are these cultural zeitgeists and which ones are just these you know, non-existent entities. Because I thought Dark Souls 2 was going to have the same legs as Dark Souls 1. And then, of course, I played it for, whatever, 500 hours or however much time I put into that game. And then you realise it just doesn't have that spark, that special thing that made it so addictive. And, of course, there'll be certain people who think it does, and to them it does, but the majority you would disagree. Like, I used to be able to go onto Twitch, and I would recognise... 90% of the streamers because they were names that I knew from the community and now I don't recognize anybody except for about four people and those four people are pretty much the only ones still around and even so they are the ones who are big and I don't really count the big ones because you're gonna recognize big names because they're getting big numbers and they're on so that they can get bigger numbers so that they can turn it into something good. But imagine if Blitzball, imagine if this took off like Minecraft and everybody for whatever reason was playing this like Minecraft and it forced Final Fantasy makers 
to to create an online version of this, or somebody modded it online so that there's online Blitzball if you want it, and that's where everybody was playing. Like, imagine that. It would be bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. But is it any more bizarre than what we have at this moment in time with people playing stuff like Hearthstone and, you know, competitive Call of Duty? Like, look how much hate Call of Duty gets, yet, as a competitive game, it's, it's one of the more popular ones. Obviously, it's not as popular as the... The, the massive ones, the crazy fucking MOBA things. But go back, what, 10 years? MOBAs didn't even exist. Or maybe they did, nobody knew about them. It's that fascinating thing. What are we gonna do here? This guy's an ass bag. He's an utter ass purse. I hate him. Jack shot didn't work, so Vilucha still doesn't have enough life. Wedge could get this to work, but he needs to not get challenged by two people. And he got challenged by two people, because he sucks! And he's nap tackling, so it's going to take off massive. Interesting, it didn't. Can we do this? Please do this. Please do this. Oh, you're a gem. Come on, Wedge. Show him how it's done. And he scores! That is what we needed. We need to bury this team. I think the most I've ever beat the Albed Sykes with Nimrock in the net was 5-0 in the, the games I've been playing before this. I've played about 20... About 25 games to get the... Attack reels, status reels, and Orox reels. I had to do two leagues, but I quit one of the leagues um, because it unlocked a tournament that got me what I wanted. So I could stop. Look at that. There is no way that's fair. We want to wither him, but it's just not working. And this shot's probably not going to reach him in time, because if it withers, it does this fancy little cutscene where it looks at the keeper when he's doing his little jive. So if you watch. Oh, it did! Nice. But doesn't it reset after half time? Yeah. So, no dice, in other words. And Nimrup leveled up just what we wanted. Another opportunity for him to get even higher stats. What a bastard. But I wonder if there's a word for something that gets popular that we don't really understand why. Or, shall we say, the person who is uninitiated doesn't really understand why, because I'm sure if you analyse them, it's probably rather obvious. Interesting. He's got a pretty good shot, so we might as well give him a shot, just in case he wants to do some Roberto Carlosing. But I'm sure there is a word, because there's a word for almost everything, and if there's a word... If there's something that we don't have a word for, we're, we're pretty good at updating it and creating one to increase the, you know, the social lexicon, which I approve of. Let's give him grip gloves. See what grip gloves does. Raises goalkeeper's ball control ability. I think that means he's not going to knock it away as much. But we'll see. It's time to bury Nimrock if we can. Score so many goals that they let him go in the next transfer window. But you'll notice too, as these esports increase in popularity, so too does the sponsorship, so too does the money that's involved with them as as you know benefactors realise that they can make money with it. Can she do this shot now? She can. No, she can't. She can do the standard one. We're trying to wither him anyway, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is this to take his catch down. But instead he did that and we never catch it, because we suck. It's terrible. But you see more money getting pumped into it, and this year is no different. Everything seems to have a million dollar reward. And I appreciate dollar doesn't mean shit in real money, because a million dollars isn't a million pounds, which to me means it's not a million. And also there's the whole difference in counting things, so if you had a billion dollars it wouldn't be the same as a billion pounds, because the two have very different meanings, depending on your culture. Which is just baffling, but well, there you go, America. But suffice to say, it says a million, so it sounds impressive. If it were a million quid, it'd be awesome, but it's not. It's a million dollars. But that's still a lot of money. And it's it's a million dollars for winning these gaming tournaments, and Street Fighter has one, because the, the Capcom guy came out and said it, and normally fighting games don't have that big a prize, so that is a massive thing for Street Fighter. In fact, is it a million Street Fighter, or is it 500,000? I think it's 500,000, but still, it's a lot. And then you have Call of Duty. Call of Duty's just been announced that that's going to have a million... 
And then of course, the other sports that have big numbers, just by sheer knock-on effect, are going to have big numbers too. Because that's how it kind of works. Right, pass. Nap pass. There we go. For Titus. And Titus is going to try and do a jet shot score, so I want to score with him. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Oh. And before that, that wasn't me trying to knock the money, guys. American money probably worth the most out of all the monies in the grand scheme of things, because you have one of the world's largest economies. So, outside of maybe China, because China's getting pretty big now, and whoever has the biggest economy kind of rules the financial world, one would think. But I don't really know much about economics, so... I'm not going to speak like I do, I'm rather ignorant on, on the whole thing, but in England the dollar is essentially Mickey Mouse money, and I get paid in dollars right now, so my wage looks impressive, but it is in fact rather shit. <laughs> oh, Titus, you're worthless. But it's similar to the Euro, the Euro is, is not as good as I would like it to be because I have a ton of Euros from when I went to, to France that I need to exchange rate back into, into Sterling, but unfortunately I'm going to lose a ton of money because <laughs> you get ripped off at those Bureau de Change, and they just, you walk in and they're already smiling because they know, right? They just know, you can tell, they've got that face, you know, it's like that Spandau Ballet song, the man with the suit and the face, like that's a, a descriptive way to say anything. <laughs> Man with the suit and the face. Just like every other man in a suit. But suffice to say, it's all silliness aside. That it's a lot of money getting pumped into the competitive scene, which is only going to reward the entire scene in hopefully helping it grow, helping the collective interest and in making those rewards even bigger. Which I think is, is a good thing for gaming in general, because it becomes a little bit more respective when it's competitive. Because unfortunately, stereotypes and stigmas will always exist. They will literally always exist. Like, there's probably some part of the world that still believes that Jews bleed. Male Jews menstruate. When any simple biology lesson will teach you that you have to have a certain amount of chromosomes for that to be the case. Yet, on religious grounds, where you can essentially push any kind of bullshit you want, if anyone's stupid enough around you to believe it without question or evidence, will realise that, hang on a second here, mate, that's not how the human body works, and we know this because we have a history of cutting it up. Whereas you want to push forward as it's God's will, well, if you could show me God's will and we can cut it up and dissect it, then I will gladly take that as an answer. But until the moment I see a male Jew menstruating without a vagina, can't believe you, because in my mind, it's bullshit. But that's what stigmas and stereotypes do. They warp the perspective. You know, all black people like fried chicken. What a fantastic stereotype is that? I've been in KFCs my entire life and I don't think I've seen a black person in it. That's not to say that it's not a stereotype that can come true, that's just to say that in my area that we don't have a lot of multiculturalness, which is... Uh, I say multiculturalness, we don't have that, that kind of minority or ethnicity in, in my area, because my area is super racist, <laughs> which is not something to be proud of, but I, I do find it rather hilarious. Not the racism part, I think that's actually quite shocking, but just the way the areas can segregate in such a way. And I was having a conversation with this with one of my cousins who's not really old enough to have the conversation, but he's kind of mature, so he, he has it anyway. But he, he tends to just parrot his, his dad's opinions, which we've all been there, we've all done that, it's called being a kid. And it's how it works. But stereotypes are everywhere. You know, English people or British people like tea. I hate tea. Tea's boring. I absolutely hate the stuff. I used to drink it when I was younger, but I just couldn't be interested at all in it now. I do not know how to ride a horse. I could probably do it if you put me on one and give me a couple of hours, but as it stands, I can't ride horses, I can't say Mr. Darby, or, or Mr. Darcy, sorry, and play, is it, what's it fucking called, that stupid sport, polo, I can't play polo, I do not have a manor in the countryside, I don't drink tea, I don't go hunting in red goats, with hounds and things, 
But that was match seven, so there's only three more games left, hopefully. Pretty much got this on lockdown at the moment. And Bottas' contract has expired. We're not using Bottas so we can let him go. Hopefully somebody will pick him up and they'll have a terrible player unless he gets better. And I think he does, actually. He's pretty good. But stereotypes will persist for as long as we have ignorance. And unfortunately, ignorance is incurable. Because there is it's a necessary evil. We need ignorance to learn from our mistakes. We need ignorance to be proven wrong. But unfortunately, people use it as a, as a weapon against enlightenment, and I hate those people. And I always end up in the most interesting arguments with them. For no real reason. Just because I said something perhaps they can't handle. And that's not to say that I'm immune to ignorance, because I'm probably the most ignorant person ever. In fact, I think if we were all humble, we'd probably think that about ourselves, because you have to. There is so much you don't know. There's so much you can't know. And that's what makes it all the more enjoyable to try and figure that shit out. Like Blitzball, huh? Will we win a tackle when we have a higher number? Maybe not. We don't know. Let's find out. Let's test this shit. Let's play more Blitzball. And that is a goal, hopefully. Or is it? Yes, it is. But in that little interim, I should have got another coffee because my throat's getting a little bit dry and I'm out, and I'm out of fluids. Because I don't practice the art of self-fellatio, there's no way I can replenish any time soon without going downstairs for the kettle. These guados are really fast. Thank God they couldn't block a turd with a wheelbarrow. Right, here we go. Should we test this keeper with, with a shot? Why not? But I have this impulse to play Final Fantasy XII, and I couldn't honestly tell you why, because when I played Final Fantasy XII, I did not come to like it. It was a good game, I respected it, but I thought it was a terrible Final Fantasy. I thought the story and the characters were almost non-existent, never developed. And when I read back, it turns out there was a, a, a health threat to the director of that game, and he was the person who did the story for Final Fantasy Tactics, which is one of the most mature and most interesting stories of all the Final Fantasies. And he was the one who was in charge, so you would think you would get this super awesome, you know, dark storyline. And apparently through the, the, the development process, he had to leave due to bad health. And all the story beats and all the character development moments were removed. So the reason why the plot in that game is almost non-existent and you never feel like you know why you are doing what you're doing and Van feels like he's completely shoehorned in is because all of those things were originally different and intended to be much more developed. So the thing that I hate on that game for the most is something that could have been drastically different if the events had turned out differently. Which is a shame because the gameplay on 12 is my least favourite of all the Final Fantasy's gameplay, but it's, a, it's at least really interesting. There's a ton of depth, there's a ton of strategy, and there's a ton of towns and quests and things. But I've only played that game once. I bought it when it came out back in 2006. I put about 150 hours into it and then I never touched it since because I really, really was upset by it. And I was upset because 12, uh, 10 was so good for me. It was, you know, it's one of my all-time favourites. Was it perfect? No. <laughs> no. No one near perfect, but... Everything that I enjoyed in 10 was missing in that game. And... You'll hear a lot of people say this, that they believe 10 was the last great Final Fantasy. You'll have some people who think that about 6, because they think that this generation was a bit rough. Even though this is technically the PS2 generation. But I'm a believer of 10 being the last great one. Though I do still think 12 is significantly better than a lot of other ones. But for some inexplainable reason, or unexplainable reason, I'm having an impulse to play 12 again. And I think it's because I'm not very good at it. And whenever there's a game that I'm not very good at, or I don't understand so well, I get an impulse to get better at it. I get an impulse to improve. I've always been that way. I kind of can't help it. 
I don't know what it is. It's a strange combination of brain chemicals. But there it is. And it's the same impulse that makes me keep practicing on the stick for things like Street Fighter 4. It's the same impulse that, that's made me play anything. Because I want to I want to know why. You know, I I'm inquisitive of, of how things work and how I can beat them and how I can break them. Sometimes it sucks because it can... Oh shit, I'm controlling. I thought that was the guy who doesn't play for me, who this team has. <laughs> because sometimes it can derail you and it can, it can make you in, in, a, in a bit of a funny mood where you can't be asked with anything but said thing. But with that insanity comes, comes the ability to do great things. Because no great thing is ever easily ac accomplished. Aside from childbirth, which is why I don't think it's a miracle, and I think it's incredibly patronising for people to compare it to a miracle. Even though miracles now have this religious connotation, which I don't agree with at all. But something that happens every minute is not a miracle, guys. A miracle is being infertile and conceiving. Now that's a fucking miracle. But, you know, just queefing out a, a sprog is is essentially the reason we are here. It is what we are biologically wired to do. So it's about as sacred as taking a dump. The only difference being is it's a massive undertaking of both money and convenience. And of course, you know, babies are a little bit cuter than a turd. But the observation stands. <laughs> this is the point where my girlfriend's punching me on the arm for the the remark. It's probably some broody people who just heard that that got all uppity and are not pleased with me, but what can I say folks, I'm only being silly. Although I do stick by the whole, I don't think childbirth is a miracle. It'd be a miracle if it came out sideways, I'll say that much. There goes my dog. It'd be a miracle if he'd shut his goddamn mouth and not interrupt my commentaries, but that'll never happen. But I think we're too quick to call things a miracle. Like a real miracle is a skinny ass mum picking up a car to save her dying child. That is a miracle because that shit is insane. But the ability to lay on top of somebody and not rock their world and then fall asleep underwhelmingly is not a miracle. <laughs> It, uh, for some people it's a vocation, for other people it's it's a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and for me, uh, you're missing out on a good hour's worth of fun that hopefully involves a, a mutual beneficial end that doesn't have anything to do with conception. <laughs> But this is what happens when you have me playing Blitzball when I'm kind of burnt out on Blitzball. We start talking about stupid things. <laughs> but people enjoy stupid things talk. Unless you're one of those people that hates it when I talk about anything other than the game I'm playing. Which... Those people will forever be pissed off with my channel, which makes me wonder why they even bother. <laughs> but we've already been through this a million times. You will always have somebody who wants to say something about something that they didn't like, that they didn't approve of, that they wanted to change, that should have been different, that they could have done better. So, with that piece of wisdom, with that modest truism, we should all, at this moment in time, collectively kill ourselves because we will never ever live up to the expectations of random internet denizen number 903. And until that moment, we'll just have to get really good at the violin and cry ourselves to sleep. Oh. We could not care. And I know which one is easier. <laughs> oh. But speaking of YouTube, I need to do an update video for it. I keep putting it off because I'm busy doing a lot of things right now. But I need to update people on exactly what's happening because it looks like it's just going to be Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy for an eternity. And for the people who are digging that, that sounds like heaven. Like to me, that sounds great too. But I appreciate there's a lot of people who, who come for different things and, uh, you know, I want to keep them entertained as well. I want to give them a reason to come back. 
because it's what it's all about really. It's about trying to maintain and, and build. And at this moment in time, we're, we're growing at a pretty decent rate. I, I'm happy with my numbers. Right. Yeah, these poor Glados, they don't stand much of a chance when it comes to trying to get down your endurance. They're like me when we versed the Ronsos, but we're officially at the part where the Ronsos... Who is that? Is that Tidus? That is Tidus. The Ronsos now are going to be a little bit faster, but it's not going to matter as much because we're going to be a little bit faster too. Wow, this defense is quick. Oh no, no, no! Bollocks, bollocks, bollocks! I didn't want to press that, but it's okay because we wouldn't have won the engagement anyway because his stat's too low. So can she get past him? I don't think she can because he has a very good attack. That's the best thing about Wedge, his attack is amazing. He's fast, good attack, and he can score reliably. His endurance too, look at that endurance. He is one of the best players in the game. And he starts off really good too. This is literally our first season. Just imagine what he's like level 99. He's probably a beast. Oh, interesting. I thought she might have had Super Goldie. But because I've been putting a lot of time into this game, I'm really hungry to play something else. Uh, mainly Splinter Cell. I can't wait to get back in and do Chaos Theory. And there's a lot of people that are really excited for Pandora tomorrow. And I keep teasing them by saying it's coming. And it is coming, don't worry. But it's one of those things where if you can get people really, really wanting something, it'll hopefully have a bigger a bigger bang, a bigger reception. And I think I'm going to try something with it, just to test the the fortitude of these people. You know, to test their their dedication to the, the Splinter Cell videos. And I might put some kind of gate on the next episode. Like, if this gets a certain amount of views, I'll unlist the next episode immediately so they can have as many episodes as they want if they put in the time, or if they get their friends to put in the time kind of thing. That could be interesting to see. Goes against my entire philosophy of making videos, but it's interesting to see. It's like a social experiment. Because unfortunately certain numbers are completely unrealistic. So this is a bad situation. This is somebody who's terrible once he gets the ball, but he's good when he gets the ball. But he's good at getting the ball, sorry. But after he's got it, what the fuck does he do? Because his pass is wank and his shot is the worst. I should have tried going through both of them. And of course Wedge is asleep because for some reason everybody tries to put Wedge asleep. But they've lost. 5-0. You did horrendous, Squados. Horrendous. Ooh, she got it. We do want both for good, good measure. I apologise about yawning, people. It's not that I'm not immersed. It's just that I had a really early morning. I'm tired. That could still go in. And it did. See, I think that's a little bit more understanding because it was only just under it. But you should either have the statistics be right every single time or have some kind of interaction. Like, if you could control the keeper and the difference in the statistics was the notifications you got or the amount of time you got to respond, then I think that would be a much cooler mechanic because not only would you be able to be your own goalkeeper, but the computer would also have a better chance at saving things they should save and a much worse chance at stopping things they shouldn't save. But this is effectively 14 years old and it's showing that age, so being too harsh on it is just redundant. As much as some people think being harsh on anything is redundant anyway because they want their entire world to be full of gundrop smiles and rivers of chocolate, when we know the world isn't like that, the world is filled with grime and ugliness and murder and abortions and, you know, Terminator 3. 